This is week three, or excuse me, quarter three, week seven on Tuesday. Number one state. If the base angle of an isosceles triangle measures 45, what is the measure of the apex angle? So that is something new. So we need to know what the apex angle is. But we're dealing again with that isosceles triangle and there's a base angle. So if I draw my isosceles triangle, we know that these two sides are the same. The base angle is 45, and like we said yesterday, if one's 45, the other one's 45. The apex angle would, so you need to write this down, apex angle is the pointed tip. So now that we know two angles, measurements. 45 plus 45 is 90. Take 180 minus 90 and you get 90 for that angle measurement. Number two, cone, cube, cylinder, sphere, and or rectangular prism. My cross sections are always circles. Well, if yesterday the cone, the cube, and the rectangular prism could have all had triangles, and a cube and rectangular prism always could have um, squares or rectangles. The only thing that we've added in here is the cylinder. So we gotta look at cylinder and sphere. I know right now that a sphere is always a circle, but if I draw a cylinder, there are circles going across this way, but once I cut it down the middle here, your cross section is a rectangle. So the only answer for number two is sphere. From the problem to the left, if you double the length of the radius, what would be the ratio of the area of the smaller circle to the larger circle? All right. So right now, during yesterday, our radius was four, and we found the area to be 16 pi. And I'm just gonna leave it with pi. Today, our radius is double, so it is eight. So then the area, because area equals pi r squared, it would be 64 pi. I'm leaving it in pi, so then when we make the ratio, it went smaller to bigger, so it would be 16 pi to 64 pi. The pi's can cancel each other out, and it's easier for me to work with these numbers to reduce by two, or I'm actually gonna reduce by eight. And I get two eighths, which then is one fourth. Number four. says find the volume of a cube whose surface area is 150 degrees. So surface area equals the area of six sides. So I need to find my surface area, which is 150. I'm gonna divide it by my six sides and I get 25. But this is a cube, right? So all sides need to be the same length. So I need to find if the area of one side is 25, I find the square root, which is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. And then now I need to find the volume. So volume equals length times width times height. So we said each side is just five, so it'd be five times five times five, which equals 125 feet cubed. Number five says to find the measure of angle B. They share this straight line. The straight line equals 180 degrees. So these are called what kind of line or angle? So 
supplementary. Got to get that memorized. Angles equal 180 degrees. So if I've got 36, I take 180 minus 36. I get 144 degrees. Finding the value of X. We had all the angles up. 80 plus 60 plus 3X plus 7 equals 180. So I'm going to add my 6, 80, 60, and 7. And that comes to 147 plus 3X equals 180. So then I can solve. Subtract 147. So now I have 3x equals 33. Divide by 3 on both sides. x equals 11. Number 7. Since find the measure of the missing angle. We have to kind of go back to, um, you can think of it as supplementary angles where they're going to equal 180 degrees and then we can also think about how they are um, sharing the same location. So if this is 109 degrees, I take 180 minus 109 and I get 71 degrees. So then this measure is 71 degrees. And like yesterday when we are talking about here, now we're going to talk about how this angle and this angle are in the same location, so they are both 71 degrees. If we are to solve for this one here, what we also have to do is have these two measures, they don't equal each other, but just pretend that this, this angle is in the same position as here. Okay, so this one is the same as here. This one is the same as right down here. Okay, because of the locations. 